Buy all natural. Without noticing, I had set down five bags of groceries on the sidewalk. Life was back to normal. It was dawn. A new day, a new rule. With my arms free, I was able to think. And thinking, walk. Everything was effortless. I moved away as if born on air. I was considering this provocative line. When all the world turns to smoke, the nose will be the discriminating organ. Naturally, I would never have noticed leaving the groceries so absorbed in contemplation if I hadn't been hungry. When all the world turns to grapes, I thought, and realized what a fix I was in. I hadn't eaten in the day, or had no memory of eating and no proof. I turned back, I ran, partly to feel tall, and partly to instill a sense of urgency and alarm. Though I felt so calm that my heart rate slowed as my foot race quickened. I bound over a baby stroller to the horror of a woman or nanny. Who can say whose children are those? Despite the rush, I stopped amidst a tide of people in heights all below my shoulder. I stupidly watched a man carry two black bags of trash out of doors. I imagined that the bags were filled with money. When I tell the story of the dollar bill, it will be clear why I think the way I do. In the Mexican restaurant of North South, one wall holds a portrait of the freedom fighter Pancho Villa, who fought in the North, going so far as to invade Texas. On the opposite wall, the southern leader, Zapata, looks out from behind a bandolier and a brace of pistols. He was shot down while visiting a friend in a hospital. Someone's coming. <clears throat> On the wall between them hangs a framed dollar bill. I was a regular customer and on one irregular day was given the frame dollar as change for a 20. I hung the frame on a wall in my kitchen and here's the dollar right in my pocket. It is important to focus in times of action. Stop dreaming about power and, f and fame and grab onto what is at hand. Even now, someone is walking directly toward my abandoned groceries. And a person who had been innocently waiting with me for the bus has turned away, as if she doesn't even notice me, or more hasn't ever noticed me or my kind. I wave my arms like a robust swimmer, treading with only his legs. I cross into the street, and despite the noise, listen to the flap of the heel of my shoe. Distraction. I rarely curse when calling a friend back home, and certainly do not curse my parents or anyone else's parents or relations. I reserve a cursing for myself. Were it not that my occupation places me daily into the line of fire, this would be an extremely stimulating episode. Racing down the middle of the avenue against one-way traffic, carefully attending to the white broken line as if running the trapeze. Such is my temperament that I scarcely kept my eyes open. And five more minutes of this adventure would have put me to sleep. Calm. I have reached the restaurant of North-South. Sure enough, the plastic bags are coming out. Are these filled with money? I asked. I'm leaving this damn country to start my own. Your own country where, I asked. Starting with my house in Queens and emanating from there. What's the name of this new country? Wait and see, he said. 20 years and I'll be recognized by world governments. Someone from my country will be elected president of the United Nations. My country will be reviewed in the Times. His restaurant had gotten positive reviews. While we were talking, dozens of big plastic bags had moved into the truck. With good reflexes and fast driving, I could start my own country. I might start my own country online. You and I could have diplomatic relations. Will yours be a kingdom? You can do what you like, but if you ever get tired of this place, consider immigrating. If you birth some kids in my country, they automatically count as citizens. The governors will be chosen by accident every few years. Chosen how? I tried to ask, but sudden pain prevented me from uttering this reply to the immigration offer. I might have crashed against the edge of this truck, its footbridge. Gradually, sensation dissipated from my leg soaking with the dusk into the sky. I farewelled the plastic bags, but nothing came out but murk from the mouth of the swamp. My hip feels red, or like a sun falling into a swamp. The surface has no feeling, only the bones and sensations. I'm afraid to look under my pants. I have stopped. Look around. I stand on the sidewalk. No one is staring at me. Maybe I hit a car, a parked car. I can't remember what happened, but I think I can't remember where I put my seat. I sway around for somewhere to sit down as if I had stood up just for a moment to see over the head of someone seated in front of me, or, returning to my place after a trip to the restroom, I look for my seat in the theater. The legs still move. The outside of these pants don't feel wet. First pressing, now punching my hip, there's almost no feeling, only the bones. I must have bumped something. This entire experience is 
passes in an instant faster than that, faster, faster. Thinking back, I make sense of it, but at the moment, I did not know where I was going and in fact, ran to the park. Rage popped and sputtered under my lip and across my forehead. Thoughts were indistinguishable from my physical reactions. People seemed to be scrambling away from monstrous me. I squinted at the street, a bench, the edge of the park. And countless legs drawing shadows over the ground. I thrust forward like a tackle beast toward a stand of elk. One limb save for striking, the others spin hypnotically. Just at the moment, such quiet popped that I reached up to feel if my ears had fallen out of my head. Everyone who had been following me broke character and looked at me. This is the same moment when I rested all my weight on a green paint bench. As suddenly as it had arrived, the pain recedes, anger follows it away, and only the breeze obtains. Of course, when I looked up, I was just an ordinary person sitting on a park bench. No one will think I'm homeless. I watched the intersection from the bench. A branch stretched over my head. I saw its shadow on the ground. A bus stopped and passengers getting off, except for two people, slammed onto the ground after tickling down the steps. One, two steps slam, then head up, walking again. I thought of nothing at the time. Now I think of a parachuter opening a chute. Jerk to a momentary halt. They float along again. This is typical. My life is a dreary record of events, until, upon reflection, it is bold and enticing. Actually, I sat in the park for the duration of the commuter rush with nothing to eat or drink. In my pocket is the lime that fell from a tree in the Museum of Art. This is a boon for my new maxim, all natural. I was starting, trying to sense whether or not the tree was made of plastic. And just when I was convinced it had been dipped in shellac, this tiny lime jumped down and rolled toward me. Plastic doesn't grow on trees, though rubber does. If there is a rubber band tree in the Met, I'll find it first thing tomorrow. Or soon. Maybe I'll go back next week or in a few months. If someone visits. These pants are so slippery, they could use a rubber waistband. As a land mammal, I'm not sure what to do with the lime. Lime is a singular fruit intended for fish to eat. I pull my glove out of my pocket and push it on. I can't handle this little lime without imagining the rough fish tongues tickling it. Lick, lick. The groceries! I slid the lime into my pocket where it slithered against my block chopping stride. The groceries must have been taken. Standing right next to them, I couldn't see them. So strong was the image of their disappearance. Now that I am carrying them again, now that I am sitting on the bus, and now that I am home, I know I have retrieved them. This is a boon for my new maxim, all natural. Today's prescription is the only one I have drawn from an advertising slogan. I'm sure all the rest will be original and arresting. The pair of tinfoil dogs walking around the living room froze as soon as I opened the apartment door. They never move when I am here. They never move at all. My sister doesn't have a mechanical engineering degree. Still, it is nice to have motionless companions. Today, I wasn't running from anything. Nonetheless, I recovered and got away without a hitch. Training, yes, but there is no such thing as talent in my business. What gave me real satisfaction and allowed me to sleep last night was the purchase of carefully selected all natural groceries. Like a dog finding its scent, I knew this would lead to something. Fritz, Fritz.